Hi everyone, my name is Nikita and welcome to the Ministry of Security YouTube channel where we aim to simplify security. Today we are going to talk about something which we use day in and day out but are not aware of, APIs. We are going to see how do they work, how are they implemented, what is SOAP versus REST and API security threats and best practices. Before we jump in, let us understand with a real life example of what an API is. Imagine you are in a restaurant and want to order the food and the chef in the kitchen is present to prepare your food. Now, unless your order is communicated to the kitchen, the chef won't get the notification. So what is missing here? The critical link, right? To communicate your order to the kitchen. That is the job of the waiter. He is the bridge between us, the customer and the chef in the kitchen. He takes your request and tells the kitchen and then delivers the response back to you. In this case, it is the food. So the waiter is our crucial connection to take requests and deliver for us. Let's see technically what API means. Application Programming Interface or API is a software intermediary that allows applications to talk to each other. Because they act as middlemen, they usually sit between applications and the web server. To put this in simple terms, an API is a messenger, just like a waiter, that takes a request and tells the system, which is the kitchen, and then returns the response back to you, which is food. So, whenever you think of an API, think of it like a waiter running back and forth between applications, devices, and databases to deliver data and create connectivity. Now, let us see how APIs work. API architecture is usually explained in terms of client and server. The application sending the request is called the client and the application sending the response is called the server. Now, depending on the need and the purpose, the APIs can work differently. In the client world, this is offered by the browser, whereas in the server world, this is provided by the web service, which can either be SOAP or REST. Now, I'm sure your next question will be, what is SOAP and REST? Now, before I answer that, we must understand what a web service is. A web service is a web application that communicate with other web-based applications over a network. They are also often called as web APIs. For example, you type in youtube.com on your browser. In the back end, the browser calls the YouTube web service and returns the response. Now, how the back end communication happens is either via SOAP or REST communication method using an API. First, let's talk about the SOAP and the REST independently, then we will embark on the fine line. SOAP is a protocol which was designed way before REST came into picture. The main idea behind the design was to ensure that the programs that are built on different platforms and programming languages like Java, HTML, Python could exchange data in an easy manner. SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. So in short, we could say that it is a messaging protocol specification for exchanging structured information in the implementation of web services. Let us move on to REST. REST was specifically designed to work with media components, files, or even objects on a particular hardware device. Any web service that is defined on the principles of REST can be called as a RESTful web service. RESTful web service would use the normal HTTP verbs of get, post, put, and delete for working with the required components. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. So in short, we could say that the REST API is simply an application programming interface that conforms to the constraints of REST architectural style and allows for interaction with RESTful web service. Let us address the most asked question, key differences between SOAP and REST. Uh, now, we have understood that in terms of design, SOAP is a protocol, a standardized protocol with predefined rules to follow, whereas REST is an architectural style with loose guidelines and recommendations. In terms of approach, SOAP is function driven. Here, data is available as services, that is, get user. Whereas REST, it is data driven. Here, data is available as resources. In terms of statefulness, SOAP is stateless by default, 
but it is quite possible to make SOAP APIs stateful. In terms of REST, it is stateless, which means that the server-side sessions here really do not occur. In terms of caching, SOAP API calls cannot be cached, whereas REST API calls can be cached. In terms of security, SOAP supports WS security with SSL support. It also has built-in asset compliance, whereas REST supports HTTPS and SSL. So obviously SOAP is more secure here in comparison to REST. In terms of performance, SOAP requires more bandwidth and computing power, whereas REST only requires few, fewer resources. So in terms of performance, REST takes a higher chance here. In terms of messaging format, SOAP only supports XML, whereas REST supports plain text, XML, JSON, HTML, YAML, etc. In terms of transfer protocol, SOAP supports HTTP, SMTP, UDP, etc. Whereas REST only supports HTTP. In conclusion, SOAP APIs are more secure by design, but REST APIs can be made more secure depending on the implementation and the architecture. With the meteoric rise of microservices and the rush to build more applications more quickly, APIs are being used more than ever to connect to services and transfer data. But with a growing number of small application pieces trying to communicate with each other, APIs are becoming increasingly challenging to secure. This persistent threat on API over the years has led to the development of OWASP API security top 10 vulnerabilities list. This list highlights the possible security vulnerabilities which affects the APIs and also provides solutions to mitigate them. The possible security vulnerabilities are code injection, security misconfiguration, object level authorization, logging and monitoring, etc. So it's very important and critical to address the top 10 OS threats when APIs are being created. I am not going to dig deeper here as this will be covered in another video. Since APIs have become an integral part of our everyday work and life, it becomes vital to protect them. Some of the best practices which can be followed to protect the API, just like we discussed are addressing OAS threats one, leveraging OAuth 2.0 authentication mechanism, testing your APIs with DAST, encrypting your data, using of rate limiting and throttling, adopting a zero trust architecture and use of a service mesh. So the takeaway from this video is that API has been a game changer for modern web applications. The rise of the API economy not only enables software companies to rapidly build key functionalities, but it, also, it has also enabled end users like us to connect to the best breed of applications. And that is the end of this video. See you soon in the next one. If you haven't subscribed to the Ministry of Security channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. I'll see you in the next one.